morning, Anambra government set up a committee to investigate jamba allegation against Ms. Oma. Omonia flood victims cry out to government for assistance. INEC confirms receiving 215 case files on electoral offences. And on the foreign scene, Ukraine braces for Russia's attack on its nuclear plant. Before the news in detail, here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a tour to turn around maintenance of the Anambra State Academy and promotion of core evil values. Let's give him maximum support for the tax ahead. Welcome to the news at seven. My name is Chidema Orangwa. Anambra State Government has for obvious reasons been following the jam Mesoma AGK Mata with a keen interest. The press release signed by the State Information Commissioner, Sepol, also noted that Ms. Mesoma AGK went to the office of the Anambra State Commissioner for Education, Professor Ngozichuma Ode, with her UTME result to protest that the joint admission and matriculation board jam did not recognize her as a candidate for the highest score. The release said that the commissioner in turn called Jam to confirm her claim, but she was told that Ms. Oma's result was forged. It was at that point, according to the release, that Jam authorities invited the Directorate over State Services DSS to investigate the matter and make its findings known. This was yet to happen when Jam went public with the matter, thus eliciting the raucous conversations are seen in the media. The release of all the state that it is not the wish of an member state government to take sides at this stage, but as a responsible government, it has decided to undertake an independent investigation into the matter. In the light of their bills, an member state government has set up a committee of inquiry to thoroughly investigate the jump mess on the matter. Members of the committee include Professor Nkem Dili Nonyelo. Chairman, Professor Mercy Okonkwo member, Professor Ngozi Chuma Ude member, Professor Madabuchi Duko member, Professor Jaja Nwanebo member, and the Reverend Sister Professor Maria Felicia Opera member. Others include the Reverend Canon Uchenna Umi Fekwem member and Mr. Chukumwike Fred Abata, MD. Anambra Information Communication Technology Agency member. The findings of this committee, according to the release, will be made public. Petty traders of the old Alpha Market Umunya are counting their losses due to the heavy flood that submerged the entire market and environs caused by the recent heavy downpours. The traders who deal on the foodstuffs like rice, beans, gari, and other food items lost virtually everything to flood because their stores were submerged by flood. Damian Ibuong has details. Some of the victims of the flood menace, which include Chinonya Iloka, Mugoma Obi and Ekema Mokwe, appeal to the state government to come to their aid since they were left with nothing and have to start life again. The families of Tabo Obidibo, Peter Nene, Osta Ogwejiofo, Aguna Nene and Esinjo Okung were not spared by the flood as they were rendered homeless and their families living as displaced persons in other parts of the community. According to Chief Peter Ekwenza Nene, who spoke on behalf of the displaced persons, said the perimeter fence in the affected area collapsed, thereby allowing flood to occupy all the buildings in the process destroying everything. He said his vehicle was submerged by the flood. The Obi and Emenaka families of Ojobi village were not spared by the flood. In an interview, a former special advisor to the governor on information and communication technology, Honorable Ifanya Gulwe, said the situation in Omunya with regards to the menace of flood requires the quick intervention of Anambra State's Emergency Management Agency, SEMA, adding that there is need for a comprehensive evaluation of flood and gully erosion menace in Omunya community, especially the Wangene and Ilomuebo side. Honorable Gulwe, who is also a stakeholder in the community, expressed regret that erosion is eating deep into the premises of the teaching hospital in Umunya. The former member of Umunya Development Union Executive Council commended the state governor for awarding the contract for the construction of the Umunya Okuzu Road, describing it as a welcome development that will help in boosting the economic activities in the area. In the, this is our whole lucky game. Uh -huh. 
I have to, I have to, I have to sustain this pay again. Uh -huh. So all the two terrible my brother. Don't uh appeal -huh. to government as a stakeholder. Uh -huh. Government is just going to in his contribution, the councillor for Omunya Ward 2, Honorable Emeka Anibob, said the people of Omunya participated in the distilling of gutters campaign in Oyi Council area under the leadership of the council caretaker chairman, Honorable Emanweke, adding that the gutters constructed by the contractor of the road in the past were too shallow to contain the volume of water passing through. The civil centre to Igbe's palace, Omunya. In a very short court, Oh, in Yaka now, two and a half years now. Oh, in Yaka, this expressway. I'm not going to say traffic here. Yeah. Uh, so I think I'm the governor, the working governor. Our working governor, Bob, Mr. Sonudo. The solution. Hmm. Oh, if we make a happy happen. In keeping to the agenda of quality and affordable health care services, or of our Governor Chukwu Mr. Ludo, the Transition Committee Chairman of Financial Lucky Government Era, Mr. Gerald Ozo, has distributed drugs worth millions of naira to the health centers in Financial Lucky Government Era during the distribution exercise which touched all the communities in Financial Lucky Government Era. Mr. Ozo and his team inspected some of the health facilities to ascertain all the challenges confronting them. Correspondent Valentine Mbadoa has details. Speaking on the objective of the exercise, Mr. Ozo said that quality and affordable health care services are part of the key interventions of Governor Toledo led government, adding that the drugs are to be administered free of cost, especially to the downtrodden. He commended the health workers and charged them on greater commitment, promising frequent visits to identify areas the local government can be of help to enable them deliver quality services to the people. Mr. Ozo thanked Governor Saludo for the privilege to serve and also the support to achieve their mandate and called on the people of Anocha to always make use of the health facility within their locality and avoid visiting quacks. Now the vision of His Excellency is make Anambra a livable and prosperous homeland and we must do that by making sure we get to the all the sectors, all the necessary people that are supposed to get it. He believes in getting things down to the grassroots. And that's why we are here by ourselves, going around all the 10 towns, making sure that we complement his effort, which is making this, this things to reach to the people, especially people that cannot afford to go to big hospitals. The Director of Primary Health Care and Northern Local Government Area, Mrs. Teresa Onyekwelo, said that the visit is timely and important as it will surely improve the health care services in Anocha. She advised the OICs in health centers to ensure they administer the drugs free to save lives. We are here to see you and your session with a charitable has from our chairman who has come to feed you and your patients with drugs, as to make those available in your health center. And uh, as you know, he, he is really an order. And the water is now flowing in your health center. Do the drugs, let us see it. Some officers in charge of the health centers, including Mrs. Rita Madaguna of Adazani Ward 1 Primary Health Care Center and Clementina Anefo of Neni Ward 1 Primary Health Center thanked the Transition Committee Chairman Mr. Ozo for the gesture and promised to use the medications judiciously. PHCs in Adaziani, Neni, Adazienu, Ichida, Akweze, Agluzibo, Obeledu, Nri, Aglo, and Adazinuku were beneficiaries of the free drug disbursement from Neni Valentine Bada reporting Fabius News. Nemo Community stood still last Tuesday as the member that represented the Njikoka to constituency in the 7th Anambra State House of Assembly, Dr. Pete Iwide, was honored by the constituency with an award of excellence for quality representation. Dr. Iwida was honored in a rouse and reception held for him at Egwegwe Square, Nemo, organized by Nemo All Political Forum. House of Assembly correspondent Chukwemeka Modelim reports. 
in his remarks, the Transition Committee Chairman to the Koka Local Government Area, Chief Lem Agui, who presented the award to Dr. Ibida on behalf of the constituency, said it was in recognition of his developmental impact across the three communities in Njikoka 2 constituency. He described the various projects, programs, and initiatives executed by the legislator for eight years. He represented the constituency as unprecedented in the constituency's history. All the political parties that you call my son, where she can't get them mad in all of them. If I have the first time, even with our corporate politics of hate and bitterness, then all political parties, with a nonya, not with a nonya, no me lofu. In an address, the President General of Nimo Tang Union, Chief Ekenenna Okafo, disclosed that the community is proud to identify with the legislator on the auspicious occasion because he made them proud with quality representation. He went further to say that Dr. Ibida channeled more resources to the area of human capital development by equipping the constituents with more employment and empowerment opportunities. Oh. In their separate speeches, the chairman of All Progressives Grand Alliance, APGA, in Njikoka local government area, Mr. Chinedu Anekwe, and his People's Democratic Party counterpart, Mr. Magnus Obodeze, revealed that Dr. Ibida ran an all-inclusive representation and spread dividends of democracy to every part of the constituency. Responding, Dr. Ibida, who was full of thanks to God for giving him the grace to perform, commended his constituents for the rousing reception accorded him. He noted that they have acknowledged good work, promoted diligence, married, and rewarded them accordingly by honoring him. The occasion climaxed with the presentation of award of excellence to the lawmaker from Nemo to Kwemeka Modelim ABS News. Newi North Lucky Government Area has launched Operation Plastic Waste of Free Newi as its Transition Committee Chairman Engineer Chris Obiara flagged of all Anambra Community Plastic Waste Pick Up Challenge. The challenge was initiated by the state government to encourage waste to free Anambra and remove plastics from the streets of the state. Valentine Mbadoa has details. The exercise drew the participation of stakeholders in Newi, including environmental health officers, core members, Anambra State Plastic Waste Pickup Team, and State Ministry of Environment, amongst others. It also witnessed sensitization, street carnival, beginning from the council headquarters through different parts of Newi, as the team led by the council mayor picked plastics waste within the area. Speaking during the exercise, engineer Obiora said that the plastic waste can be converted to wealth and helped on the need for environmental protection and sustainability through effective management of plastic waste. He narrated his ordeal while the silting drainage channels in Newi, noting that all the drainages were blocked by plastic waste. Engineer Obiora who emphasized that healthy and sustainable environment is at the heart of building a livable and prosperous Anambra state as envisioned by Governor Chuhuma Soludo, called on people of Newi North to imbibe the right attitude of being patriotic and law-abiding. He regretted that plastic pollution constitutes major environmental challenges and called on individuals to be part of the exercise to permanently solve the problem. The Newi North coordinator of all Anambra State Community Plastic Pickup Challenge, Comrade Echezona Anyebunam, on his part said that the exercise will continue until Newi is free of plastic waste. He thanked the TC chairman for his support, adding that sensitization will be taken to all markets and schools in the Newi for sustainability. The 
law members liaison officer for Newe North local government area, Mr. Promise Wogu, who led the call members to join their side, promised effective partnership. Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has affirmed that it received 215 case files from the Nigeria police following their arrest and the conclusion of investigation into electoral offences arising from the 2023 general election. The chairman of INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, who stated this at a meeting with the resident electoral commissioners in commencement of his post-election review engagement at the commission's headquarters in Abuja, disclosed that they are working with Nigeria by Association MBA to prosecute the alleged offenders. Princess Ekwi Ajide tells us more. He added that already MBA has submitted a list of 427 lawyers across the country who have volunteered to render pro bono services to the Commission, but by mutual agreement, the Commission will provide a token amount to cover for filing fees and expenses. He also disclosed that they are working with the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, and the Independent Corrupt Practices Commission, ICPC, on the prosecution of cases relating to vote buying and associated violations. According to him, since the conclusion of the election, diverse opinions have been expressed by political parties, candidates, observers, analysts, and the general public on aspects of the election that took place in February and March, stating that such diverse opinions are normally expected and the Commission welcomes all of them as far as their purpose is to improve the future conduct of elections and to consolidate democracy. Professor Yakubu noted that the security challenge which threatened to derail the elections did not materialize as concerns that the polls would be disrupted by the perennial insecurity across the country fizzled out on election day and elections were largely peaceful despite currency and fuel challenges and widespread attacks on, on INEX personnel and facilities nationwide. The INEX boss reminded Nigerians that the elections were held for a total of 1,491 constituents made up of one presidential, 28 governorship, 109 senatorial, 360 federal constituencies, and 993 state assembly seats. And that record shows that these elections have produced the most diverse outcomes ever recorded since 1999. Aligned with our policy, at the end of the internal review and engagement with stakeholders, a comprehensive report will be published by the Commission. As a Commission, we hope to continue to count on the support of stakeholders to improve the electoral process in Nigeria. In Abuja, Princess Ilkwi Ajide reporting. And on the foreign scene, Ukrainian officials said they have procedures in place for a potential Russia assault on the Zaporizhia power plant, as Kiev warned of a provocative uh, provocation rather, from the Kremlin at the facility. Deputy Defense Minister Hanna Malaya warned that Moscow is capable of completely reckless actions that could pass off as sabotage by Ukraine. At the same time, Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov said there is a great threat of sabotage by Kyiv or other plant which could have catastrophic consequences. Malaya said on Wednesday in order to minimize the potential negative consequences, imagine Emergency services have been training for several days in four Ukrainian regions, Nipropetrov, Zaporizhia, Keshen and Makolev, to overcome the consequences of a possible terrorist attack on the ZMPP. Russia could attack the plant she wanted to turn the momentum of the war in its favor and achieve its military goals, she added. Announced was Karo. Carlo Ancelotti has won the Champions League four times as a manager and twice with Real Madrid. Real Madrid boss Carlo Ancelotti will take charge of Brazil next summer, says the Brazilian Football Confederation president, Ednardo Rodriguez. The five-time World Cup winners are confident the Italian will be in place for the Copa America in June 2024. Rodriguez said Fernando Diniz will oversee the Selaco until the 
Then, alongside his role as Fluminense boss, Brazil have been here without a permanent head coach since the World Cup when Tide resigned following their quarterfinal defeat by Croatia with under-20s coach Ramon Men Menezes taking charge of recent friendly fixtures. The death has been announced over staff of the engineering department and Amber Broadcasting Service, Mr. Ikechu Ignatius Anachuna. Late Mr. Anachuna, aged 43, died on the 11th of June 2023 after a prolonged illness. A statement from his family signed by Mr. Emeka Anachuna says late I.K. Anachuna will be laid to rest on the 13th of July 2023 at Christian Anachuna's compound opposite St. Raphael's Catholic Church, Agweke Ubenu, Okanoth, Lake Government Area. Remember that you can follow news and programs on ABS from any part of the world by liking our Facebook page, follow us at Anambra Broadcasting Service, subscribe to our YouTube page at ABS Television Oka, and on Twitter at ABS Radio TV. Instagram is at ABS Radio TV. You can also log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. And now the main points again. Anambra government to set up committee to investigate jamb allegation against Mesoma. Omonia flood victims have cried out to government for assistance. INEC confirmed to have received 215 case files on electoral offenses. Ukraine has braced for Russia's attack on its nuclear plant. Governor Chukuma Saluda has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Ibo values. Let's give him massive support for the tax ahead. And that's it on the news this morning. Many thanks for joining us. My name is Chedema Orangwa. Good morning.